25-year-old Matthew DeWitt of Columbia, South Carolina, is behind bars and is accused of fatally shooting three family members in Richmond and Horry counties, including a town councilman. According to the Horry County Police Department, at about 4.40pm on the 9th of October, officers responded to a home on the 4000 block of Highway 319 to a report of a death. At the scene, authorities reportedly found 52-year-old Natasha Stevens' body. Police said the death was ruled a homicide. Later that same day, at around 7.05pm, deputies with the Richland County Sheriff's Department responded to a home at 434 Green Springs Drive to perform a welfare check. At the scene, deputies reportedly found two deceased victims, 52-year-old Glory Dewitt and 52-year-old James Dewitt. Both victims died from apparent gunshot wounds. The following day, at around 2.25pm, police arrested Matthew Dewitt in connection with the deaths. He remains held at the J. Rubin Long Detention Centre. One of the victims, James Dewitt, was an Atlantic Beach town councilman and had served on the council for about a year. The motive in the murders is currently unknown as the investigation into the matter continues. A 22-year-old woman was held captive, raped, and assaulted for weeks in a home at Excelsior Springs, Missouri, until she escaped last week wearing a metal collar and sought help from neighbors. The suspect, 39-year-old Timothy Hazlitt Jr., was arrested on the 7th of October and has been charged with first-degree rape, aggravated sexual offense, first-degree kidnapping, and second-degree assault. Police found the woman earlier that morning wearing a metal collar with a padlock and latex lingerie with duct tape around her neck as if it had been pulled down from her mouth. The woman told deputies that Timothy picked her up at the beginning of September and kept her in a small room of his basement, restraining her wrists and ankles with handcuffs. She said that Timothy frequently raped her and whipped her while she was being held hostage. Marks on the woman's back were consistent with being whipped and the woman reported that she did not know the suspect. The woman said she was able to escape when Timothy took a child to school. Sierra Tharp and Lisa Johnson, who lived near the home, said that after the woman escaped last week, she started banging on doors and pleading for help. The woman reported the matter to the police at 7.47am that morning to the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Shortly thereafter, Timothy was arrested outside his home without incident, located at 301 Orchard Avenue. The victim was treated at a nearby hospital, as she was reported to be in a stable condition. Timothy is held at the Clay County Jail on a $500,000 bond. 23-year-old Lauren Courtney has agreed to plead guilty to murder early this week in the death of a 5-year-old boy she killed while babysitting in 2021. The plea means that she effectively raises eight other abuse charges and although she will remain behind bars at the Clark County Detention Center, she'll become eligible for parole after 20 years. The attack occurred on the 11th of March 2021 at an apartment located at 5146 South Jones Boulevard in Las Vegas, Nevada. The authorities said that the home surveillance cameras installed by the boy's father, Kayia Peralto, captured the attack on film. He reportedly installed the cameras after his seven-year-old daughter told him that Lauren was hurting her brother Ryan. Kayia told authorities that he checked the cameras on his phone at around 11.40am and saw that Ryan was laying motionless on the ground while Lauren was cleaning fluids off the floor. About 10 minutes later, Lauren called Kaia and told him that Ryan had vomited blood. Kaia rushed home, went back through the footage, and discovered what happened to Ryan. Kaia contacted the police and transported Ryan to the University Medical Hospital, later turning the surveillance tapes over to the police. Officers were able to view the video surveillance on the app from Kaia's phone. The investigators observed Lauren pulling Ryan by one arm through the door of the bathroom. Lauren can be heard saying, I know you're faking it. She's seen kicking and punching Ryan in the face and slapping him on the chest. He then removes Ryan's underwear and drags him into the shower. She squats down to kick him in the head some more as his body becomes limp and unresponsive. The beating lasted for about two minutes. Doctors said that in addition to a fractured skull and a brain bleed, the boy had also sustained damage to his spleen, liver, pancreas and intestines. He succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced dead the following day. When investigators questioned Lauren, she said that Ryan had a bruise on his head when she arrived to babysit, insinuating that the boy's father was at fault. When asked if she knew that Kay had security cameras, she said, I know, he has three. After initially trying to place the blame for Ryan's injuries on Kaya, Lauren told the police that she became upset after the boy urinated in his pants. 
Lauren said it was a continual problem and she was tired of having to clean up after him multiple times week after week. She said that the last time Ryan urinated on himself was the final straw that triggered her anger. At one point Lauren reportedly admitted to getting mad and hitting Ryan, but later she claimed she blanked out due to mental health issues and could not recall how the boy sustained his injuries. She also reportedly claimed that the boy hurt himself by slipping in the shower. Lauren told police she was an entertainer, he babysat on the side, making around $300 a week from the Peralto family, 